When he saw that case, he was like, I never want to be a prosecutor. I want to represent the underdog. I want to be a criminal defense attorney. And that's kind of where his interest peaked. you guys welcome back to the channel welcome if you're new here hey hello my name is Angela and I make videos about law school lawyer life and a bunch of law stuff so today's video is actually going to be an episode of the legal breakdown show now if you are not new here you know about the legal breakdown show is it something I rolled out mid last year where I just kind of talked about hot legal topics any sort of news in the legal community and um, just crazy stories about lawyers and legal professionals. The woman who was accused of killing her um, daughter, Kaylee Anthony, and Jose Baez, who is now a household name criminal attorney, got her off of that case. So I will link that below in case you didn't check that one out. But today's video is going to be about another infamous household name criminal defense attorney, and that would be Mark Garrigus. I hope I'm saying that name right. Many of you may have heard of Mark Garrigus. Like I said, he's very, very famous or infamous, depending on who you ask. Not only is he a defense attorney, but he's also built up a career in civil litigation as well. A little bit of background about Mark Garrigus is he's an Armenian American lawyer who was born and raised in Los Angeles. He attended Haverford College in Pennsylvania for undergrad and then went on to go to Loyola Law School where he earned his Juris Doctorate and then eventually got admitted into the California bar in 1983. He still resides in Los Angeles and now he owns his own firm in which he founded and is the managing partner for Garrigus and Garrigus. Unlike myself but like many lawyers Garrigus comes from a family of lawyers. Kind of a generational lawyer thing going on similar to Alex Murdoch who we won't talk about in this video but if you guys are interested in any sort of crazy cases I know you guys have heard of him. Um, we might talk about him now because he is a very infamous lawyer but back to Mark. He grew up in a family of lawyers his father was a lawyer. His dad was actually a prosecutor for the county of Los Angeles. Mark, as a little boy, would tag along with his dad, like go to his trials, watch everything. And there is where he kind of formed and built his desire to become an attorney. And in interviews he's done in the past, he's talked about kind of that like moment that made him decide that he wanted to be a lawyer and that he wanted to be a criminal defense attorney. And what it was, was he was watching this case where this 18 year old young man was being prosecuted for being in the presence where marijuana was being possessed. So if you think about that, he wasn't being prosecuted for possessing marijuana. He wasn't being prosecuted for using marijuana. He was simply being charged for being in the presence of marijuana. And that man went on to be sentenced to 16 months in prison for being in the presence of drugs, not using, not possessing. And Mark was in the courtroom for that case. And even though his dad was a prosecutor and watching his dad be a prosecutor is what sparked his desire to be an attorney, it actually turned him away from wanting to be a prosecutor. When he saw that case, he was like, I never wanna be a prosecutor. I wanna represent the underdog. I want to be a criminal defense attorney and that's kind of where his interest peaked and obviously he pursued that by going to law school, getting admitted to the bar and practicing criminal defense law. So like I said, many of you guys have probably heard of Mark Garrigus. I know back in the day when I used to be like an avid reader of TMZ, he was on TMZ like weekly for just notable clients that he represented. And we'll talk about some of his notable cases and clients because it'll kind of probably spark your memory about who he is. Um, but one thing to note about his reputation, which is why I included him in the Infamous Lawyers series, is he's called the bad boy defender. Another lawyer was quoted basically saying, if Mark is your lawyer, then you're guilty. <laughs> um, and you know, I don't think Mark minds that, you know, he has that reputation because again, he wants to represent the underdog. He wants to represent the person that everyone hears the story and automatically assumes they're guilty and he wants to be the one to represent that. I think that's a common trait with criminal defense attorneys, especially ones who want to really build up a very big practice and be uber, uber successful. Well, that's kind of how you get there. I mean, we take it back to the Jose Baez case, which like I said, I'll link that in the description box, but his career took off when he represented Casey Anthony. And if you remember the Casey Anthony trial, in the court of public opinion, in the news, she was guilty as sin. Many people still think she was guilty as sin. Hell, I think she's guilty as sin. That's neither here or there, but that case put him on the map. So taking on those types of cases as a criminal defense attorney can be very strategic 
for your career. I mean, you're on the news, you're being asked to, you know, speak to reporters, your trial is on TV, those types of cases can really set you on the map. So that's something to consider for any of you guys who might be future lawyers or lawyers watching that want to be, do criminal defense and you want to be the next big, you know, bad boy defender. I would look at that strategy. Um, I've talked about this on this channel before. Criminal defense is not for me. I'm a corporate lawyer, transactional lawyer all day, every day. But if I was, I might take a page out of Mark Garrigus and Jose Baez and some of these other criminal defense attorneys books. And you'll find that in this infamous attorney series, a lot of them are criminal defense attorneys. I feel like criminal defense attorneys get a very, very bad rep. But, you know, I am a believer in, you know, there is a justice system. And honestly, I'm that type of person where, even as a lawyer, I'd rather a guilty person get away than an innocent person be convicted. And the case that kind of got Mark's career really jump started was back in 1998, 1999, where he represented a woman by the name of Susan McDougall. She was a former business partner of President Bill Clinton. She was charged with contempt, obstruction of justice, fraud, embezzlement, and connection with the Whitewater cases. He got her an acquittal, not guilty on fraud and embezzlement, and she received a presidential pardon. So this really kind of put him um, in the eyes of the public as you know a notable lawyer because obviously those cases were very popular and if you want to know more about the cases or the clients that i'm going to talk about in this video i will leave some information in the description box below because we're not going to go into the cases after you guys watch this video and you think like well i would like you to go a little bit deeper in the cases maybe i'll do some videos where we talk about the cases like we did in the jose bias video where we talked about casey anthony some other notable clients that you'll definitely recognize michael jackson he represented michael jackson and his uh, child molestation charges that he had. I don't think he ultimately ended up seeing that one through though because he was also representing Scott Peterson in the, his murder trial. Um, if you guys remember Scott Peterson, he was the man who was accused and convicted of murdering his unborn child and wife, Lacey Peterson. And he was actually convicted and sentenced to the death penalty. And I think he's still fighting for appeals today. That's something I think is important to note is that you don't necessarily have to win these cases for them to help put you on the map. I mean, certainly every lawyer, every trial lawyer wants to win their cases. But the Scott Peterson case, he did not win. Scott got convicted and <laughs> sentenced to the death penalty. And that case still really, really, really help put him on the map and really really kind of increase his notoriety he got uh all sorts of opportunities from being highlighted in such a highly publicized case like that another notable client of his was chris brown and this is where i think i saw him the most back in the day when i was on tmz is him representing chris brown and all sorts of his legal woes i know one was the felony assault of rihanna but honestly in, in there was a time where chris brown was just being sued and just getting in trouble a lot and mark was his like spokesperson his lawyer his go-to his mentor his everything and so he was in the news a lot for the chris brown cases and we'll be talking to tmz and other reporters um around the courthouse down in la i remember seeing clips where mark was calling chris like his little uh or he looked at Chris like a son or, you know, a, a, a nephew or something like that. So they had a really long term client lawyer relationship. I'm not sure if he's still his lawyer to this day, but he was definitely Chris Brown's lawyer for a long time. If you remember the Winona Ryder case where she was accused of shoplifting like several thousands of dollars worth of stuff and kind of tarnished her reputation as an actor. He also represented her in those charges where he got her off. She served no jail time. I think she got probation and counseling. He represented Robert Downey Jr. on drug charges. He represented Colin Kaepernick. If you guys remember the NFL related controversy surrounding Colin where he would get on bended knee during the, the national anthem and all the you know issues that caused and he accused NFL teams of blackballing him and that whole sort of controversy he represented him in connection with that uh i think he helped him negotiate certain deals with nike and just all sorts of things he was kind of a spokesperson and representative for colin as well one of his most kind of recent popular cases he represented jesse smollett if you guys remember that controversy he's an actor who was accused of manufacturing a hate crime so essentially um he said that he was attacked by two men who kind of beat him up and just attacked him for being um a 
gay man and then the media once they heard the story they were super sympathetic it was a lot going on people were very supportive of jesse and then later on it came out that there was allegations that Jesse had made the whole thing up and paid the guys to attack him so that this could be a big media thing. And then the Chicago DA actually charged Jesse with manufacturing a hate crime and he was facing jail time. And Mark Garrigus represented Jesse in that and got him off of that and has been a spokesperson for Jesse as well in the most recent years. So that was another kind of big case that he did. But honestly, you guys, he has a laundry list of notable cases and notable clients. He is known as a celebrity lawyer and he also has some pretty significant civil litigation cases as well that he has um, participated in and been successful in. So one thing I did uh, when I was doing my research on Mark, one thing that I really liked about him is that not only is he a lawyer, but he does other things within the legal community and there's kind of journalism space as a celebrity lawyer. And it just kind of is a reminder for any of you guys who have a law degree that you know, the traditional path of being a lawyer, going to trial or working at a firm or whatever is, you know, always an option, but a law degree does open up other options for you as well. And so one thing Mark did was capitalize off of, you know, his popularity as a lawyer and in the criminal defense attorney, in the criminal defense and civil litigation space. And he's been able to obtain roles being a legal commentator. He executive produced um, a show. He executive produced a documentary. So he has also found his way into the journalism media space based on his experience and time as a lawyer. So I think that's really cool. He's still practicing today, but I do think he has kind of a multifaceted business and has used his legal experience um, to do other things other than, you know, just your traditional practice of law which I think is really really cool and very very lucrative y'all because according to the internet according to the googler Mark Garrigus has an estimated net worth of 25 million dollars that's nothing to sneeze at you guys that's some big money so for those of you who are looking to be those rich lawyers I know there's a lot of uh, preconceived notions about lawyers and them being rich and it's it's really not true um most lawyers are not rich i will say you know lawyers are usually adequately compensated but i wouldn't call them rich but if you are looking to be rich that might be the way to go so one last thing i want to mention about mark is that you know he is the people's defender but he's also had to defend himself at times because um he's kind of landed into some legal woes legal drama as well himself particularly in the most recent years if, if you guys are familiar with the avenatti case the lawyer who represented um trump's accuser stormy daniels in lawsuits against donald trump well avenatti i hope i'm saying his name at least remotely correctly but he was arrested on charges for trying to extort money from nike for like 25 million dollars and by threatening the company with bad publicity and just all sorts of things he was also accused of embezzling his clients money he was ultimately charged with extortion and wire fraud in new york city and when these allegations came out that he eventually got charged with and went to jail for he got sentenced um for these allegations there was news about a co-conspirator who hadn't been charged yet and mark garrigus was one of the people named as his co-conspirator now nothing ever came from that he never got any formal charges no one ever said that he actually was the person but there was enough press about it where it really did affect him he had to speak about it he lost some of his legal commentator roles on i believe cnn so he was kind of in his own legal trouble with that luckily for him he didn't get charged with anything and nothing ever came from it but also most recently the state bar of california had issued kind of a statement that they were investigating uh, mark garrigus and one of his close uh, business associates in connection with a multi-million dollar insurance settlement that was related to the armenian genocide if you guys are remotely aware of the tom girardi case that's been going on in connection with uh him mishandling his role in protecting the clients and their assets and diverting the money that was intended for certain charities and victims of the genocide then you kind of probably know what i'm talking about but yes mark garrigus was one of the people that was named regarding that investigation mark and his associate have like strongly denied any wrongdoing in this mark even said that they've done like three investigations with the state bar of california nothing came from it and he basically kind of blame the state bar of california saying that they're just doing this you know to kind of cover 
you know, as a CYA, you know, cover their butts because they've been highly criticized for, you know, letting the Tom Girardi thing that was just blown up um, slip by. And we'll have to talk about the Tom Girardi case because that's a, a lot. Uh, but yeah, there was no formal accusations or anything. But the State Bar of California did say they were looking into him just because he was involved in that. But it seems so far that nothing's come out and he's maintained that he's done nothing wrong. He's maintained his innocence and maintained that he's been cooperative and continues to be as these inquiries keep coming up. And he's just kind of saying like the State Bar of California is just covering their butts, which I wouldn't be surprised if that was true because the Tom Girardi case was a huge deal and still is a huge deal. And the State Bar is receiving a lot of criticism around it. So yeah, you guys, that's pretty much Mark Garrigus in a nutshell. Like I said, I will leave information to some of the notable clients and cases in the description box below so that you can kind of look into these cases more. If you guys want to see more of these videos, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. We're going to be doing a lot more of these episodes of the Legal Breakdown Show because you guys, every day there's a new story coming out about something in the legal community and I absolutely want to opine and give my take and my view and get you guys' thoughts too. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.